¿Qué tal amigos? This is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another Vocabulario Vivo. Today, what do you think? Are you ready to learn some numbers? I think you are, so let's get started. It's not all fun and games though. I still have one more verb to teach you. Last week, we learned tener, to have. Let's review those forms again real quick. Yo tengo. El tiene, ella tiene, usted tiene, ellos tienen, ellas tienen, ustedes tienen. Yes, it's a little weird. You got the G in the first person singular form. You've got the I in front of the E in the other forms. Uh, but the most important thing is that the O and the E and the EN are at the end like they're supposed to be. And so just remember, you know, by looking at that end, you're still going to be able to figure out whether you're talking about me or he or they, etc. All right. So don't get too overwhelmed uh, by the middle. Focus on those endings to make sure that you can tell who is doing the having. Our next verb also means to have, but more in a grammatical sense. This is the verb you would use to form the perfect aspect. Like when we say in English, I have understood. The Spanish would translate that as he comprendido. You can see the present tense form of haber here, and yeah, they're very regular. You start off with a, like the first person singular form of saber, say, right? And then this ER verb starts following an AR pattern for some reason with A and ON. Don't forget, H's aren't pronounced. So we have ABER, A, A, ON. This verb even gives SER a run for its money. It's weird. But I have great news for you. You don't have to really worry about these forms right now. Of course, I'm not going to run head first into the perfect while we're still baby stepping our way through the simple present tense. The reason I wanted to introduce you to Abed actually is that it has a unique impersonal form, which is to say it's not first, second, or third person. This form in the present is I, and it translates essentially as there is or there are. Number's not really important with this verb either. So yeah, it's that simple. If you want to describe whatever's just lying around in Spanish, there's only one word you need to remember, and that's I. Pronounce it with me just a few more times. I, I, I. Short and sweet, right? So let's practice a little bit with the two of these verbs. Okay, here's the vocabulary that I introduced last week. Try to translate this sentence for me. Do you have a notebook? Okay, do you have? Again, haber is just grammatical have. So when you just say, do you have something, um, you know, you have an object, is it in your possession? You want to use tener. You. Well, okay, so the formal you, let's assume it's one person, you would use usted, that is tiene. Again, no do. Okay, just raise your voice at the end, no do in Spanish. Okay, do you have a notebook? Notebook is cuaderno, put it together. Usted tiene un cuaderno, tiene un cuaderno. But the sentence, sorry, I don't have one. Sorry is a new word. Sorry is lo siento. Okay, lo siento. And then the rest, I don't have one. Again, no do, not becomes no. So I no have one is no tengo uno. You could say no lo tengo if you want. I don't have it or no tengo uno. So lo siento. No tengo uno. Repeat that, uh, sorry, with me a couple times. Lo siento. Lo siento. Lo siento. That's always a good uh, phrase to know, right? So, lo siento. I'm sorry. But they do have an extra notebook. All right, so I don't have anything, but they do. 
Okay. What's the word for butt again? Perro. Okay. Um, instead of do, here in, in English we use do for emphasis. In Spanish you would say si for that same amount of emphasis. Okay. So they, yes, have an extra notebook. Extra in Spanish is extra. Extra. Yeah, you know, pronounce the letters a little different, but extra. The one difference, the more important difference is that it's an adjective, so it goes after cuaderno. So let's see how that sentence comes out. But they do have an extra notebook. Pero ellos sí tienen, okay, en at the end. Ellos sí tienen un cuaderno extra. Okay. Are there extra pencils too? So now I'm not saying do they have or who does anybody have. Are there? It's impersonal. Okay, there's not any person. So just are there extra pencils? This is I. Okay, this is where we're going to use I. So uh, pencils, um, extra. Extra doesn't really change uh, depending on the gender, but you do need to add an S if it's plural because it's an adjective. All right, what's the word for two again? También. So, hay lápices extras también. Hay lápices extras también. Usually Spanish is longer. That's the, the rule. All the words in Spanish are longer. I is an exception. Instead of two words, there is, there are, I. Okay, so that's nice and simple for you. Hay lápices extras también. Yes. There is one more. Lucky yes. Okay. So how would we say that? More is mas. And we would still use I. And it's not going to change whether it's one or, or many. C si, I uno mas. So I lapises, I uno, right? I un lapis. Um, I doesn't change. Nice and simple. C si, I uno mas. Hay uno más, one more. But what if there are two, or three, or 76? Let's learn some numbers. Los números in Spanish. Repeat that with me. Números, números, números. Remember that accent mark, that little sign over the U, tells you that the emphasis should be there and not later in the word, so números. Many English speakers already know at least some numbers in Spanish, usually up through number 10. Just to be safe though, let's start from the beginning. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Let's do it again. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. One more time, a little faster. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Now let's practice with these numbers, starting by translating this sentence. How many books are there? Well, you don't know the question word for how many yet. So let's start with that. Good news in Spanish, it's only one word. You've, you've got lots of luck today, don't you? Everything's one word. So the Spanish would say cuanto, cuanto. And that uh, is used for both how much and how many, all right? One of the most important were, uh, phrases for any traveler, cuanto cuesta, how much does it cost? Okay, um, how much does this book cost, right? Cuanto cuesta, if it's, it's plural, you've got a bunch of books that you're trying to buy or a bunch of different knickknacks, cuanto cuestan, all right? Um, but repeat just the singular version with me, cuanto cuesta. Cuanto cuesta? Very, very important. Hopefully you're writing down your notes because uh, you'll, you'll want to use that one. Um, cuanto is an adjective 
And so even though as a question it comes in front of the at the beginning of the sentence, it is still going to match in gender and number the noun that it's attached to. So keep that in mind. So for example, how many books? Books is libros, that is masculine, but plural. So it's not cuanto libros, it's cuantos libros. And are there? I. Cuantos libros I. Okay, cuantos libros I. Let's count and find out. In Spanish, of course. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Okay, there are five books. So you would say, hay cinco libros. Hay cinco libros. What about computers? How many computers are there? The word for computers is computadora. So uh, computers, plural computadoras, make sure that quantum is feminine and plural. Quantas. Quantas computadoras hay? Quantas computadoras hay? Well, let's count again. This one's easier, right? Uno, dos, tres. Hay tres computadoras. There are three computers. Hay tres computadoras. One more for you, but I'm going to make you count a little further. How many pencils are there? Okay, so pencils, lápices. ¿Cuántos lápices hay? Okay, let's count. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Okay, there are seven pencils. We say that hay siete lápices. Hay siete lápices. Well done. Now, I'm not going to stop today just at 10. I want to give you a little more vocabulary to practice with. Take your time and study at your own pace. You don't have to master all of these all at once. It is nice to have them all in one place though, so let's move up to 20. The first five numbers after 10 in Spanish are admittedly a little irregular. This is not totally different than in English though, where we go 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, etc. You can start to see a pattern. In Spanish, the first five might be a little weird, but then their own pattern kicks in and actually continues all the way to 100 and beyond. With that in mind, it shouldn't be too painful to simply memorize the small lot, starting with once, doce, trece, catorce, quince. Okay, let's do that again. Once, doce, trece, catorce, quince. One more time, a little faster. Once, doce, trece, catorce, quince. The next number is where the pattern starts. Dieciséis. And if you look at it, it's actually diez, e, and, right? Diez, e, seis. Ten and six. So very straightforward. The spelling changes a little bit uh, in the early numbers. So instead of a Y, it's an I, but they're pronounced the same. So that you can pick up later. Um, you're just putting those two numbers next to each other. So dieciséis, which is followed by diecisiete, dieciocho, diecinueve, and veinte. Okay, let's do that again. Dieciséis. 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, one more time. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're going to go through this one more time. 1 to 20. You ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Whew, breathe, you did it, good job. I'm also going to have you count by tens, because once you have that 10, all you need to do again is add the single digits afterwards, you know, with E, and you can make up any number that you need. Okay, 20, 21, 22, 23, it goes on just like that, okay? So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. After 100, 100 becomes 100, and then you just start over. So 101, 120, 199, okay? Uh, it's a very pretty simple system, okay? So, same becomes ciento. Other than that, it's, it's pretty easy, okay? So, let's go through just the tens again and practice those pronunciations. So, make sure you're, you're repeating after me. Diez, veinte, treinta, cuarenta, cincuenta, sesenta, setenta, ochenta, noventa, cien. One last time. You ready? Diez, veinte, treinta, cuarenta, cincuenta, sesenta, setenta, ochenta, noventa, cien. All right. You've got all those numbers. You can count up to a hundred and beyond. How's that feel? Practice makes perfect. Are you ready? Translate the sentence for me. I have 14 books. Well, what verb am I going to use? Again, if you have something, if something's in your possession, you're going to use tener. Okay, what's the word for 14? That's one of those weird ones. It's catorce. Catorce. So, tengo catorce libros. They have 40 books. Okay, so we're still going to use uh, tener, but it's going to be they have, so Tienen. And then what's 40? It's 40. So you have 14, you have 4, 14, 40. They're all similar. They're all similar. Okay. So 40. Tienen 40 libros. Finally, in total, there are 44 books. In total in Spanish, En total. Almost the same, right? Okay, so that part's not hard. There are, this is where you're going to use haber. You're going to use I. And then what's 44? Well, we're going to combine. We're going to say 40 y 4. Okay, 40 y 4. En total hay 44 libros. Hay 44 libros. Great job counting. I know that's a lot of vocabulary for one video, but this is actually going to be my last for some time. Apex Languages is moving to Charlotte, so I'll be taking a little break over the summer to move, settle in, and figure things out. I'm not sure when I'll get back to creating new videos, but hopefully by September, when I finally get to send my kids back to a real school and have some time to myself. Fingers crossed. In the meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos at apexlanguages.com to keep you busy, and I'm still happy to receive emails with questions or practice assignments, or just to say hello. Contact me at any time through apexlanguagesnc at gmail.com. Until we meet again, thank you as always for watching. Be happy, be healthy, and stay safe. Hasta la vista.